Should we be funding billionaires' space hobbies? I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. So there is a space race going on, as you know, and there's a lot of fight between, you know, which billionaire is the worst, because apparently billionaires are a bad thing for reasons. And I can agree that they should probably pay more taxes, but that's hardly the issue. Uh, there is a space race, and guess what? Here we are. We're in, truth or consequences, New Mexico, home of spaceport, which we're not allowed to see. Come with me, come here we go. Sir Richard Branson, he uh, helped to fund Virgin Galactic. I mean, it was, he, yeah, funded Virgin Galactic. He didn't invent the rocket, he didn't build the rocket, but he substantially paid for it. Uh, he recently went to space, depending who you can, what you consider space, as did Jeff Bezos. Now, the problem I get here is we're complaining about billionaires because they're, they, should, they should pay more taxes and spend less energy going to space. But they are going to space, and it is their money, and they can do with it what they want. And the important part is that they are using their money to make taxpayers pay less to get the same thing. When you look at Elon Musk and SpaceX and what they've done for, for space launches, for payload delivery, is they've cut the cost of getting goods into space by about 70%. That's money in my pocket. That's money in your pocket. NASA's going to launch stuff anyway. The Navy, the Air Force, they're going to launch stuff anyway. This is a net win. So if you're in Truth or Consequences, which, as I've pointed out, I am, you can check out this, uh, this museum. It's a visitor center, and it is free. And it's... Uh, it's worth free. There's not a whole lot here to check out, but it is neat. And there are tours of the spaceport that you can do. I can't do one because um, I didn't have enough notice, and they're only doing one a week right now. But they're going to be stepping up to four, five, or maybe even more a week very soon. Um, wear your mask, people. That's the best way to get these tours going again. And. Uh, and otherwise, we can't go out and see Spaceport. Unless we do this. Haha, <laughs> actually went to Spaceport. There's a little mock-up of the uh, Virgin Galactic uh, little starship bad boy. I don't think I can call it a starship, can I? Spaceship 1. Ah, Spaceship 2. That's a mock-up of Spaceship 2. I got there. It's uh, kind of neat. You can get not as close as you think. It's bigger than I than I realized. It's bigger than I realized. In my in my head it was tiny like a like a Cessna and that's more like a like a large Gulf Stream. Which is cool. Yonder you can see the actual spaceport itself. And this is, without an invitation, as close as you can get. Uh yeah. Let's uh walk over here. This is the best view you're going to be able to get of the actual spaceport. What you're looking at here is the backside of it. That's astronaut walk right up the middle. That's where you go right up the middle. The astronaut walk. Go in there, do your prep, away you go. Can't even tell where the airstrip is from here. Uh, my assumption is it's on the ground and that space is in the upward direction. But I I'm not qualified to say for sure if that's how it works. I do not know. So here's the thing with the space, with the billionaires and the billionaire space race. There's three different projects from three different billionaires. This one, Sir Richard Branson, is the humblest of the, of the bunch. It's a space plane that only goes up and comes back down. That's all it's meant to do. It was developed by Bert Rattan of uh, Applied Technologies uh, made from this company right here. What's it called? Applied Composites. Hmm. This this name right here is what it is. Uh, it's the humblest. It's the simplest. It's the most basic. And still, people are furious. Billionaires. Why are they getting our money? Why do they get free money? They don't deserve it. NASA is giving them a little bit of money, but it's to do things to do zero G testing, microgravity testing. And there's two reasons for that. They need the testing done. They need a low cost provider and there is no lower cost provider for that kind of service. Nobody is providing lower cost, zero G, you know, microgravity experiments than Virgin Galactic. The second reason for it is they want to 
promote these companies. They want them to succeed. NASA can't succeed if rocket companies don't succeed. The second most ambitious project is the one from Jeff Bezos, former employee at Amazon. You might have seen him. He looks like uh, a slightly less evil, or no, more evil Lex Luthor. Yep, that's right. Uh, his project is vastly more ambitious than Virgin Galactic. It is to get orbital. It hasn't gotten orbital yet. And they've gotten a little bit of money, and they're going to get more as their project continues. People are furious. How dare Congress bail out billionaire Jeff Bezos with his toy rockets? That's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. <laughs> if you win a contract, it's because you've, you've got the cheapest offer. That's it. Your lowest bid gets the deal. In the case of the Artemis mission, they wanted two providers. They only selected one because the costs were too high. Jeff Bezos came back in and said, look guys, here's the deal. I am going to put in two babillions of my own dollars and make that thing happen. And you don't have to give me any money back until we reach the point of the project where we should be. That's a good deal. That's free money. That's money going straight into NASA's pockets. Basically, you're saving the taxpayer dollars. So that's a win. And then of course there's SpaceX, who is actually delivering payloads to the space station, who is actually uh, launching cars into a intra-Mars trajectory. What would that be? A, there's a word for it, and it's so hot outside I can't think. A trans-Martian trajectory, a trans-Martian orbit. Pretty sure that's right. And they they can, SpaceX is doing amazing things and will continue to do amazing things. That was never in question. The question is, should we be giving billionaires all this money? And the answer is, for services provided, yes. Because it's either give the money to them or give it to a multinational conglomerate like United Launch Alliance, who does the same job, but at a vastly higher cost and slower. So it's all, it's all a win. So here's the thing, guys. If you get a chance to come to Spaceport, eh, I guess, maybe? Maybe do it. I'll see. Uh, I'll see if we ever get back this way. If I can actually get in there, because I'm sure it's more inspiring from the inside. But from the outside, it's still really cool. If you happen to be in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and why would you be? At least check out the visitor center in town, which we were just in. Very cool. Very nice people. Maybe come out here. It's kind of a hike. And in any case, let me know what I missed or misunderstood. Leave all that hate for the billionaires below and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when it's not so gosh darn hot outside. Thank you as always to my amazing Patreons who get early access, bonus material, an ad-free experience, and help keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month. Without you guys, this road trip never could have happened. So I thank you for that. Welcome to Therese Schwartz and James Aspinwall at the very cool level, very cool. And for those of you who hung around this long, I got a little bonus for you. Yeah, there's some cool footage coming up, but the first thing is, when you put in the location on GPS to get there, a Google Maps might just take you across dirt roads because they think they're better. Yeah, we drove through 20 minutes of farmland for no reason when we should have been on pavement. So that's kind of weird. Anyway, enjoy this little sightseeing tour and the drive up to the location at the end.